guess what, guys? We're still in the mix for European qualification in our first season at Cadiz. Uh, welcome. Welcome to everyone. Uh, again, thank you for the support. As always, uh, the views keep going up. The hours watch keep going up. The average view times keep going up. I appreciate your, uh, appreciate your support. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that you're enjoying the content. Um, if you want to subscribe to this video, the link is down in the description. Um, I hope you like what you see. But yeah. For all you regulars, let's update you on what's been going on. And we're, let's watch another game of football. So what's happened since you was last year? Uh, well, the first thing that happened is we had a youth intake. My first youth intake at the club. Um, and according to whoever does this little bit here, I don't know if this is your assistant manager or your recruitment analyst or your head of youth development. I'm not sure who gives you this feedback. I'm guessing it is the head of youth development. He's saying it's excellent. He's saying it's five stars. Now, to me, I'm looking at that and thinking, well, five-star intake, that's got to be telling me that I'm going to have a whole team of wonder kids coming through. Unfortunately, the way FM works does not work like that. And although it's five-star intake and you'd think that, first class when you hover over it, her first class intake, it's not as... Uh, as amazing as it initially sounds, it's okay. It's decent. We've got a couple of decent, um, <clears throat> a couple of decent youngsters coming through. We've got Juan Juan, who is uh, officially sort of a right back, right winger type uh, role. He looks decent. I mean, good work rate, good technique, good crossing ability, um, good acceleration. Yeah, his technical stats. I mean, a little bit worrying that he's a little bit sort of constant lacking in concentration, lacking in composure. Uh, off the ball movement isn't great, vision isn't great, but at 15 years old, he's still got plenty of room to grow. And I mean, according to the head of youth development, he is the one with sort of one of the most potential, potentially four and a half star player. Uh, but we will see. Now, the reason I called him Juan One is because down here, as a defensive midfielder, we have Juan Two. Um, Juan Two is also uh, initially on current ability. Um, he reckons he's better at the moment but won't necessarily grow into as good a player as Juan One. Now, Juan Two as the uh, as the uh, defensive midfielder. Now, to me, he looks a little bit more um, a little bit more accomplished in the mental stats. Um, so he looks a little bit more of a rounded player already. He's got more more of a balanced personality than the sporting personality of Juan One. Um, yeah, good passing ability. Again, good technique, good decision making. Um, I mean, as a defensive midfielder, um, he's got a lot of attributes already that uh, could see him turn into a, a very good player. But he is about sort of half a year ahead of Juan Juan. He's already turned 16. Um, he will turn uh, only just... Um, but yeah, he's a little bit ahead, um, but we'll see. I mean, potential ability could improve a lot. We'll certainly keep an eye on the two Juans. Um, Sergio, attacking midfielder left. Uh, again, mental stats definitely half decent down in this area. Determination, flair off the ball movements. So very attacking mental stats are good. Uh, composure, concentration, bravery, really poor. So... Yeah, he's got lots of technique and lots of flair. We'll do a nice little dribble, take on a couple of men, get down the wing, and then not have the composure or the concentration or the bravery to do anything with it. So, yeah, Sergio, we'll keep an eye, but I don't hold out huge hopes for him. Um, one of the players that I do like the look of, another attacking midfielder left is Salif Saar. Um, again, a little bit more composed on the ball, good first touch, good pace, great natural fitness. Strength needs some work, um, even though he's six foot two. So he's a tall lad, but not very strong. So I'm guessing maybe a Peter Crouch, tall and lanky. Um, but we will, we will see, we will see. Um, so we've got some youngsters here that don't look too bad, but certainly not convinced that it's a five star intake. Um, again, Tito and Manga. Uh, good good stats initially on the... Uh, I mean, again, they're not standing out as amazing, but 
a couple of these kids, kids, could, a couple of these kids, a couple of these kids uh, could make it. Um, like I said, I mean, in Cadiz, in, I don't know if this is just Spanish football or just Cadiz. I'm guessing it's Spanish football. Um, you can tell I've not done much uh, previous management in Spanish football and previous versions of FM. Um, we do have a senior team, a B team, a C team and an under-19. So there's good options there for progressive growth as players get better and generally in my weekly team meetings uh, my coaching squad do tend to come back to me and tell me when to promote people through the team uh, so yeah so that's the first update that's the youth intake we've done that that's out of the way we're not too excited about it but we'll keep an eye one thing i am excited about though is in the last episode i showed you todd cantwell who's joining us in the summer on a freebie from norwich we've now got another attacking midfielder another winger um joining us on a freebie from Shakhtar Donetsk we will be welcoming for free Mano Solomon 23 years old Israeli attacking midfielder at loan on Fulham this year from Shakhtar um not made too many appearances them 12 appearances in the Premier League not done the greatest in the Premier League but at the same time, we know that the Premier League can be a different level. And I have very often noticed on FM that if a player in the Premier League is scoring 6.8, 6.9-ish as a, as a, um, on, on the regular, then generally they can go to a lot of other European leagues and be a 7.0 minimum average rating player. I expect Manor Solomon to join us this year on this free transfer and certainly be competing for our first team next season, 100%. I mean, my assistant manager's saying um, that he's uh, current abilities three and a half stars, potential abilities four. Like I say, he's only 23, so he's got some growth in him still. He's got some good stats. He's a great dribbler on the ball. He's going to be an exciting addition to the team. Um, yeah, I, li I like the look of him. And I think at the moment it's saying not for sale, obviously, because we've agreed a future deal with him. Um, but before that, I think when we agreed the deal... He was valued at something like 14 to 18 million or something. So if he joins us in the summer and is immediately worth, say, 20 million pound plus, we've had a right touch getting him for absolutely nothing. And even if he is a flop after one season, we should absolutely cash in and earn some decent money off him. So I think this is a great addition to the squad. But I am really hoping that he doesn't flop. I'm hoping he does really well. Um, and he's got the, uh, the initial ability to do that as well. So let's fill you in on results, what's been happening. So the last time you was here, uh, we obviously got thrashed, absolutely battered by Real Betis. Um, it was really poor. Now, the, the game that followed that up, though, was, uh, was Valencia. And it was a 3-2 win at Valencia. What a performance. And I'm not being funny as well. Have a look at this. Yusufa Makoko. Yusufa Makoko. Yusufa Makoko. Makoko has finally turned up. After joining us in loan in January, playing a couple of games, he was then got injured for five or six weeks. He's come back and two braces on the bounce in two back-to-back -back wins against Valencia and Espanyol. A goal in the 5-2 win over Celta Vigo. Makoko is all of a sudden bang on form. Don't get me wrong, we've got doubts at the moment over the fact whether he's actually 18 years old. But who cares when he's scoring five goals in five starts? I, I'm i certainly not. I don't care. I don't care if he's 38. Makoko's coming good. Um, so yeah, that Valencia game, a uh, bit of a whirlwind game to be fair. It was one that it didn't look like we was going to win. Uh, we went behind twice. Twice we came back and then pinched it with an 84th minute winner. Um, from Fernandez, uh, Mateus Fernandez got his first goal for the club, um, and if I remember rightly, I think it was a, I think it was a banger, if I remember rightly. Um, but I'm going to show you anyway. So, like I said, one nil down um, in the 40th minute. So there wasn't much happened before this, to be fair. And I, I think Ledesma's been pretty solid for us in goal this year, but that wasn't great. I mean, I would have expected him to do better with that. Uh, Makoko then using his pace, outpaced the defender, keeper made a lunging dive, got nowhere near it, he just nicely slotted it under, a nice composed finish. Valencia were back in front from a set piece, so the corner, nice nice header from Nico, got himself up amongst all of our defenders. Um, but like I said, it wasn't long that, would, uh, that we were behind Zaldua, 
out to Sabrina and Sabrina Makoko with a powerful first time effort. And the confidence that first goal obviously shining through there for the second. And then later on, like I said, Bongonda got down the right wing, cut in beautifully and pretty much laid it on a plate for Mateus Fernandez to score his first goal for the club. Um, and it was a massive three points and it gave us all the confidence in the world to then host Espanyol um, and cruise to a 3-0 win. I mean, we absolutely dominated possession. They had a lot of shots, in, uh, almost as many shots as us in this one. But I'll be honest with you, they were pot shots whenever they had a highlight. It was a hopeful effort from miles out. You can see that from the average ratings of the team, the whole team achieved in this game apart from Zaldua. But other than that, everyone was great. We even had, we won 3-0 and had another three goals chalked off by VAR. So it could have been six. Makoko, Alex Fernandez, and Bongondo all, uh, all having goals disallowed. Um, but I'll show you the goals. Let's have a look at the goals here as we, uh, yeah, as we, um, as we got back-to-back -back wins and got ourselves uh, very much back in the mix after that Betis defeat. Um, Makoko there having it laid on a plate. Again, tidy little finish. Uh, if you give him the opportunity, he certainly will tuck them away and he is proving that now. And then Bongonda again, put Makoko through and again, pace. Just pace. You can really see the pace of the youngster um, as he just, yeah, just left the defender for dead there. Nice little chip over the keeper. And then Brian Acampo with 20 minutes of the game left. Um, his powerful shot was saved. And Alex Fernandez sort of, I think he was running. I don't think he even really shot. I think it kind of just hit him and then sort of went in. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, we followed that up with a, a really disappointing um, away defeat. Uh, sorry, a home defeat against Girona. Girona are struggling. They're down in like 16th, 15th now. I think they were 16th when we played them. Um, and yeah, it, it, they've been a bit of a, bit of a bogey team for us uh, this year. We've played them twice. We drew one all and we lost one nil. Um, so we, we really struggled against one of the weakest teams in the league. Don't really have an explanation for it. Um, followed that up with another disappointing result, another struggling team. Mal Malorca went away, could only manage a nil-nil draw. And if you look at the stats, we were we were outclassed for quite large periods. Yes, we held possession, but they had shot after shot after shot. We only managed two shots on target in the game. We were really poor going forward. As you can see, most of the attacking players recorded a poor rating in the game. Just not good enough. Um, Alex Fernandez got sent off in the 50th minute. So in that respect, the fact that the back four and the goalkeeper had a really good game for us uh, probably got us that, that point. Um, and I suppose when you have a player sent off in the 50th minute at nil-nil, do you feel grateful for a point even against a league struggle? Probably, especially if you're Cadiz and was meant to be down there struggling yourself. Um, but anyway, again, looking for a reaction after a couple of disappointing results. And boy, did I get it. 5-2 victors over Celta Vigo. Uh, Celta Vigo. Uh, Makoko back on the score sheet. Luca per Lucas Perez with the hat-trick. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, and uh, Sorry, I got my bearings mixed up. I said before for that Valencia game, didn't I, that um, Mateus Fernandez goal was a banger? It wasn't. I got it mixed up with this one. It was the most recent game you'd think I'd actually remember. But yeah, Lucas Perez was actually the one that got a banger in this one. Um, another one that's uh, a, 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 a contender for goal season. There it is. Nicely looped over the top. Beautifully controlled. Um, brought down with the left foot and then first time effort. Nicely in the top corner. Uh, Vigo were, were then back on uh, on level terms in the 17th minute. Poor defending. Strand Larson all the time in the world. No one picking him up. But uh, yeah, and it was into the second half on the hour mark that we was back in front. Uh, and it was a Lucas header into the open net after the goalkeeper come out flapping a little bit. A uh, bit of a gift. Um, and then penalty spot for them. Um, I mean, David Gill came in for this one because Ledesma's picked up an injury, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and he was very close to saving that, to be fair, on his first appearance of the whole season, I think that was. Um, we obviously then got back in front from the penalty spot ourselves and then rounded it off nicely. Makoko come off the bench in this one, scored himself a goal, and then he gets the assist here for the uh, for the fi final now in the coffin, the fifth goal. There's Makoko, left foot. And for Brian Acampo, just for a nice, uh, nicely timed finish into the goal. So that's where we stand. We've uh, we've only lost one game since you was last here, so it's been decent. Um, we're fifth in the league. Um, we're one point behind Atletico Madrid, who have now jumped above us into the Champions League spots. Um, the biggest thing for me right now is there's eight games left, 
and we have a nine point lead over seventh place seventh place Sevilla it is looking extremely likely that we could bag ourselves European com uh, European competition next year we could qualify for Europe despite having been tipped for relegation um, and it is now I'm now starting to believe I've spoken to you in these previous episodes and I've told you I don't quite believe I don't quite believe I think we're going to drop off I don't think we're going to do it now I'm starting to think we 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 might just do this we might just do this however the schedule is grueling over the next few games and that's why I've come in now I very cleverly brought you back for this episode in the hope that I can show you a win because we lost against Betis prior to that we drew nil nil with Elche in the episode before that so you haven't seen me win for a couple of episodes and I've kind of thought well I don't really want to come back for Real Madrid or Sevilla or Barcelona or Villarreal where I think we won't win any of them games so I thought let's let's quickly jump in and get an episode in on the Getafe game Getafe are sitting what 18th in the league like it, it should be a win we, we should be enjoying a win together on this episode today as we know things don't always go to plan and we'll probably go out and get spanked like five nil now or something but i'm hoping that we'll win together last time we played getafe uh, we did lose in all fairness we lost three two uh so we are, are after a bit of revenge going away to their place um but uh yeah well we will see we will see going into that one um with regards to squad um, like I said, Ledesma's out injured at the moment, so he's missed the last game. Um, he's out for up to another two weeks, so probably likely to miss this one and maybe the Real Madrid game at least as well. Um, and yeah, we've other than that, we've we've obviously with the end of the season starting to approach, um, players are generating interest, ready for the summer. Luis Hernandez, New York Red Bulls, Jose Brazil, Dua, Lille, uh, Santiago Arzamenda, Millwall, and Vizela. Uh, Theo Bongonda, Real Valladolid, uh, Alex Fernandez, Everton. So we're starting to get. So I think it could be a busy summer coming up with transfer bids coming in for a number of players. Uh, but it's probably testament to how well we've played this season that our players are generating interest. Um, people are coming in for them, um, or are likely to be coming in for them. They're, they're sniffing around now. Um, so yeah, with regards to the league, like I said, we are fifth overall sort of statistics. Um, yeah, the only thing really any of our players lead is the yellow cards. Espino's got 12, which to be fair, we have had a little bit of a problem with, uh, with, we, we've been a bit rough and ready this year. We've been a little bit, uh, OTT with the tackling, shall we say, and three of our players are in the top four for most yellow cards. So, uh, we're a little bit naughty boys. So little slap on the wrist. Um, but that rough and ready approach is working for us because we're massively overachieving. So who cares? Who cares? If you don't like it, you know where to go. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at. Um, let's let's kick on with this Getafe match, I suppose, um, and enjoy a win. Hopefully, but we've got some bad news before we get into that Getafe game. Literally in the last. As I was just going through a couple of days, Ruben Alcaraz is out for the rest of the season. Possibly even the start of next season as well. Five to six months, damaged Achilles tendon. Ruben Alcaraz has been a first team starter for me this year. Do you, if you'll remember, he started the season with an injury. Um, so he came into it late. He's played 20 games, uh, 18 as a starter. He has been a regular um, although he hasn't contributed much in the way of goals and assists, I mean, he's got three assists. He is pretty solid, and when he plays, we definitely do look a bit better in midfield, a little bit more comfortable. So that is a gutting blow just before we get into this game. Uh, a week to sim through. Uh, there's the final of the Copa del Rey. So as you can see, Real Madrid have won that. So they're on target for for a double at least. Um, three one win over Barcelona. Um, let's have a look at the stats. Yeah, it was well well deserved. I guess double the amount of shots, uh, double xg. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, to go to be oh, that's Barcelona. As I was going to say, the stats aren't great. But then I'm looking at the wrong team. What I was saying that. Even only three of the Real Madrid players actually scored over a seven. So I'm not sure what the quality of the final was like. Um, most players didn't seem to actually play that well, weirdly enough. Um, but Real Madrid do win the first trophy of the year. 
Um, and uh, yeah, as as we know, in the league, they have a ridiculous lead at the top, 15 points uh, to a uh, lead with, uh, with what? eight games to go so pretty much wrap that up as well um i'm not sure if they're uh oh that's our schedule not their schedule i was going to say let's have a look and see if they're still in the champions league running as well uh they are not they was knocked out by porto um on penalties in the last round so got to yeah, only the round of 16 so disappointing you in europe but it does look like it's going to be for sure a domestic double for real madrid and again, just before we get into that Getafe game, we've got more good news. Oh, I love my board. My board are just awesome. As I am looking to build Cadiz into one of Spain's biggest, best clubs, they just keep they just keep accepting all my requests to improve things. So junior budget has now been increased at my request from adequate academy coaching to good academy coaching. Um, and youth recruitment for the second time this season has now been improved again um, from good. So we're now excellent. So with the so this year now we've taken training facilities uh, are up to excellent. We've actually had them improved. That's all complete. That works. Youth facilities we haven't even asked to have work on, but we can look at that maybe next season. And youth recruitment has gone from I think one and a half to two and a half stars. So we're going in the right direction there as well. So. Everything's growing. The reputation of the club, the club, the club should be growing as well. Um, especially with this season, like even if we was to lose every game, we're probably still looking at top half finish, which is well above what was expected. Um, so yeah, it's it's good to see that finances are solid. Sixteen million in the bank, so yeah, no issues there. Um, it's all good. It's all good. Hopefully, it will continue to be good with a Getafe win. Obviously, a Cadiz win over Getafe. I mean. So team selection for the Getafe game. Uh, back four, as most of the season it has been, Zaldua, Chust, Hernandez and Espino. It turns out Ledesma has recovered in time for this one, so he will be in goal. Uh, Gustavo Sensao is getting the box-to-box -box role um, with the uh, with the injury to Ruben Alcarez. Uh, Jose Marie in the deep line playmaker. Bongonda, Fernandez and Acampo as my uh, three attacking midfielders and Makoko up top. Uh, I've tried something slightly different for this game, so we're going to see how it works out. But uh, I normally play my wing, uh, my fullbacks on inverted wing back in this formation. I'm going to try them as fullbacks, just to try and add a little bit more width um, and just support these wide areas a little bit more. Um, the only real reason being that we lost to Getafe last time out. Now. You'll remember I said about Girona and what we struggled against them twice this season. I think it was because I didn't do anything different. So the fact that I lost to this team last time I played them, I feel like I need to do something slightly different. But I don't want to make wholesale changes and upset the whole rhythm of the team. So that's the slight tw like tweak that I've made. Um, and yeah, it's just something that I do. Um, every now and again, if we lost to the team, if we're struggling against a certain team, I'll just tweak things just a little bit. And see if it makes a difference. So we're going to try and add a bit more width. And if it works, it might be something that I stick with. It might be something I trial for a few games. It may not work at all. And um, we'll just see from the highlights about player movement and if it's working or not. So if you carry your last performance into this match, we'll do well. I think that's fair to say after scoring five in our last game. Um, with regards to Getafe. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm just going to quickly check, but Munir, who uh, was very good against us last time, he's very much left-footed, he plays on the left, so I'm going to try and encourage him inside on his right foot, and Porto is very much right-footed on the right side, so again, I'm going to try and encourage him inside onto his weaker left foot. Um, <clears throat> Your team have hit a purple patch in front of goal recently. That's got to be pleasing. Um, goals win games, so obviously it's very pleasing for all of us right now. The first goal is crucial, right? I'm just going to say it's, it's always... Uh, no, yeah, we, we want to score first, of course, but it's not imperative. How big of an absence is Ruben Alcarez? Uh, now we face a challenge of whether or not we can overcome these setbacks because injuries happen a lot, so we have no choice but to try. Just try to be positive about that injury, although Getafe are on a, of only won one of their last five, um, although they haven't lost in three. So a bit of mixed form for them. That's our lineup. Can Makoko do the business? Will his pace uh, prove to be uh, too much for the Getafe 
full back, uh, centre backs. We will find out. It is game on. Ten shots in and not a single shot recorded for either team just yet. But we've got the first uh, highlight. No, we haven't got the first highlight. It looked like we was, but we've been overturned. The play's been overturned, and there's Munir. And, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's not a great shot. He has the first chance of the game for Getafe. Um, it's a very, very slow start. 15 minutes in, just the single shot, just the single highlight. Not much going on. Uh yeah, it's not really giving me much chance to look at them fullbacks and if that's working or not, really. Um, here is Bongonda for us, though, as he hugs that right touchline, cuts slightly inside and plays it to Mateus Fernandez, who's got two around him, but plays it nicely back to Bongonda, who takes a shot when maybe a cross would have been the better option. Um, it was on target, so he can't completely... Uh, rip him apart for it but I think across there with two other players in the box would definitely have been a better option than wasting the uh, the opportunity there with the with the with the shot and now it's Getafe looking to break at the other end and they very very nearly did uh, the commentary there at the bottom said that was an absolute sitter and to be fair I think it was that is a golden opportunity that Getafe have missed uh, to take the lead in this game and we've been we've been poor We've we've not really been uh, been in it so far. We we've not looked good. Um, one half chance in the whole half, and it's Getafe again who are looking to get in front, and they should be, and they are. Uh, Jamie Sione, I think that's how you say that. Um, we 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 look awful. I'm going to start blaming this on you lot because every time you lot come and watch an episode, we're losing. Um, I'm only joking. I'm only joking, guys. I'm only joking. But yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can give a response. I'm going to tell the lads I want to. I'm going to demand more because this has not been good enough. We're dominating possession, but we're just not creating any chances for it. Definitely going to be going to a more attacking mentality in that second half. Uh, with the amount of possession we've had, I am going to thrash my arms and I am going to tell the lads what was that? Get your acts together because that was definitely not good enough. We're going attacking. Um. Do we keep these guys? I mean, 6.7 and 6.6, .6, but then it's hard to say if they're playing badly or well or because nobody's really playing well. So we keep it as it is with the fullback positions for now um, and hope that that kick up the arse provokes a reaction from the lads. Only four minutes into the uh, to the second half, and there is a highlight, but it looks like it's going to go Getafe's way again. We had the ball. We've given it away sloppily. And uh, Getafe now are looking to build something. But again, they've given it away. And Brian Acampo to Asensal. Oh, it's a shot. I think the keeper's let one through there when he shouldn't have done. It would take it. It would take it. It was a nice low whizzing shot across the surface. But I think the Getafe goalkeeper will be disappointed with this. That he should have done better. Brian Acampo intercepts the Getafe pass. Asensal, one touch. Ah, oh, the keeper's got to be doing better with that. We'll have it. We'll absolutely take it. But if that is Getafe, if that's been a, a, a signal or a sign of Getafe's goalkeeping this season, it is no wonder that they find themselves battling relegation uh, down at the very bottom end of the table. Um, that was poor. It was a gift. Um, but the youngster, Gustavo Asensal, um, does bag a, uh, he's, I think that's his first goal for the club. Uh, Brian Acampo swings in a corner. And it's Jose Marie with a left foot volleyed effort, which is uh, hooped out from the, the back. And it's landed back at Jose Marie's feet again from Espino. Um, Jose Marie heavily involved, but he's been tackled and the play's been overturned. But uh, we very quickly won it back again. And Chust with a hopeful ball down the right wing, which Bongonda has got on the end of, swings in across and it's a penalty. It is a penalty, and again, I think Getafe will feel a little bit hard done by here. It looks like a soft one. It may get overturned by VAR, but it hasn't. VAR has, a, has agreed that it was a push in the back. It was a shove on Brian Acampo, and we've got a pen. Luis Hernandez, the centre-back, steps out, and it's saved. Oh, I saved. I can't believe it. Oh, I don't believe it. Golden opportunity to go 2-1 up in front and the keeper's pulled off a great... So I don't think it was a bad penalty, I just think it was a good save. 
Makoko's not really been in the game. Let's get Lucas Perez on. He's scored so many times from the bench this year, and we really, really need him to do it again. We're going to get Conceição on for Bongonda, who hasn't really impressed as well. Luis Hernandez, I've, I'm going to take him off just because I... Th I th oh, wrong, wrong one. Um, I'm going to take him off just because I, I think that penalty miss may have really dented his confidence, and that could hurt us. Um... That could hurt us if, uh, yeah, if he's not on it for the final 20 minutes. So we'll get Fally on. Fally, Fally. Um, it's 15 minutes to go. It's sort of anyone's game, really. It's not been the greatest game. It's certainly not been a great performance by either team. For these last sort of four minutes, I'm just going to push. I'm going to push these onto wing backs rather than full backs. See if we can get either, either full back down the wing. And whipping across him for Perez. Because he has scored a lot of his goals that way this season. But it doesn't look like we're going to create another chance. We're running down the seconds. And it is full time. And it's a 1-1 it's a one -one draw. It's a disappointing result against the team at the bottom end of the table again. A game we should have won with that penalty kick. Um, I'm not even going to say something. Because I don't like what I just saw from the team. Um, Makoko was poor. Bongonda was poor. Jose Marie was poor. Luis Hernandez was poor. They're all getting told individually that I'm not happy. Um, they do all look fired up, so at least it's the right, uh, I suppose, it's the right um, right reaction that you want to see. The point does lift us above Atletico Madrid, who had a really surprised defeat against Almeria. Um, they lost 2-1 against the 19th place. So he wasn't the only ones to effectively slip up. Um, and the point that we get does put us above Atletico Madrid, um, but only just. Uh, we do now hold a 10-point lead back to 8th place, uh, so we have extended that as well. Um, and obviously with Real Madrid picking up the Copa del Rey, it does mean that uh, all of the top 7 will get European qualification. So that still with 7 games left and a 10-point lead over 8th place, that still looks very much on the cards. Um, just disappointing not to win that game. We really have let uh, let points slip against lower league teams. Let's go to the press conference. Jeremiah Ledesma has now made 100 league appearances for Cadiz. What does he mean to the club? Um, it's a great moment for him and I'm proud of what he's been able to do for this football club. Gustavo Asensal picks up the player in a match order for your side today. How did you rate his performance? Um, he's a good player and he's enjoying his football. When he plays like that, he makes everyone else play better too. With Domenico Tedesco spotting, spotted watching Theo Bongonda today, would, would you consider selling him to Real Valladolid? Uh, I'm not interested. Uh, you've used a staggering 27 players so far this season, the highest in the La Liga. Can you explain why that figure is so high? Uh, I'm a firm believer in regular rotation in order to help keep flat players fresh and able to handle the demands of a long season. How would you describe your relationship with Fran Escriba? That's the uh, Getafe manager. Uh, I'm not going to slate the geezer. It says we've got a good relationship up here. Um, we get along well. Fran is one of the good guys in football. Are you able to offer any insight into the reasons behind your current tactical approach? This is how I believe football should be played. Um... Certainly not how it should be played in that last game, though, because we was not good at all. So that's where we're at. That's where I leave you again. Um, seven games remaining. Um, and I would sort of suggest that I'm going to go and probably lose a few games with the fixtures that are coming up. Um, we'll come back either here or here. It could depend on whether it's second or second to last or last game of the season that means something. Um Hopefully we'll be very much in this running for some form of European qualification for next season. Um, but I'll be back soon, tomorrow in fact, with that update as we finish our first season in I'm So Kadizzy. Thanks again for being here. If you want to subscribe, the link is down in the description. See you later guys.